So first of all, a compound exercise is a multi-joint exercise. So it's an exercise that basically you have two joints moving at the same time. This could be a back squat where your knees are moving and your hips are moving, deadlift where quite a few joints are moving to be honest with you, bench press, overhead press, these big compound lifts, which are probably going to be the most bang for your buck exercises. So they're gonna come first in a lot of your programming. An isolation exercise will come later, but your most beneficial with your time is gonna be spent on these compound lifts. Back squat, deadlift, bench press, overhead press, bent over barbell row, pull-ups, dips, that's gonna be my main seven exercises, which you will always see in my programs. They will just carry over the most. And like, if you only had a certain amount of time, say you had half an hour, you would go in and do one or two of those exercises and that would probably give you the most benefit rather than going in and trying to do isolation work. Now, isolation exercises, this is a single joint movement. And normally this is just targeting, isolating one muscle group. Like a good way to explain this is a chest fly. So whether that's with a dumbbell, a band, whether that's with a machine or a cable, basically you're moving your arm in this plane and we're trying to focus on kind of squeezing our chest and really targeting that muscle and feeling that muscle work. Isolation exercises I use in two different ways. So I use isolation exercises at the end of a session. They're less taxing on your central nervous system and you don't have to stabilize your body as much as you would do in a compound exercise. So because you don't have to stabilize your body so much, it means that you can just focus on maximal output with that muscle group. And because it's less taxing, it means it doesn't need, and it doesn't require coordination so much. It doesn't require you to amped up for it as much as it does like compound exercises and these bigger movements. The other way I use isolation exercises is to get you to be able to feel a muscle group. So if you cannot feel a muscle group working with these compound exercises, so for example, you want to feel a back squat and you want to feel it in your glute. Now, how do I get it to feel it in my glutes? A lot of times it's form and cueing yourself in the right patterns will, will normally get you to be able to feel the muscle groups working that you want to feel working. But if you still struggle, it could be worth doing something like an isolation exercise where you do something like a frog pump or a hip thrust just to get your glutes really, really working. You get connected to them, you feel them squeezing, you feel them releasing as you come back down. So then when you go into a back squat, you feel yourself kind of releasing your glutes and using them as you come up to the top. I'd say that in a good program, if you're training three to four times a week, you will have a combination of, of both compound exercises and isolation exercises. I find if you have a weak body part, nine times out of 10, isolation exercises will really help with that. Either if they help you get connected to that muscle group or just to add that additional volume in, um, I feel like that could be really beneficial because I know a lot of people, like I've had a few clients who don't feel the bench press in their chest. Every time I see that, it's normally form and it's probably poor movement pattern. So if we can adjust their upper arm angle and kind of adjust where this sits when they do a bench press, we adjust their retracting of their shoulders and their positioning of their chest and their internal thinking and internal cueing of, right, what do I do when I've got this? I want you to think about pushing your chest up almost rising your chest up off of the bench as you push. So as I'm pushing up, I'm trying to get my arms to stick closer to my body. I'm really trying to feel my chest start to squeeze. But what if you struggle to do that? Well, bench press probably isn't the best one for you to be able to feel it on. So you're unlikely to be able to get this much of like a mind muscle connection on a bench press. If you used a dumbbell, for example, or a machine, chances are you're gonna feel it more. It's not to say that a bench press is a bad move for building muscle because compound exercises, you're gonna be able to lift the most amount of weight, which means that you'll be able to progressively overload your body more, which means that you are going to drive probably the main system when it comes to hypertrophy. That mechanical tension that we're looking for is going to come from adding more weight to the bar, lifting as much weight as possible, which will come from compound exercises. That is just a little breakdown of compound and isolation. Put both in your program, both help each other, 
both carry over to trying to gain strength and muscle. I'd say if you're trying to target strength, compound exercises are first. If you're trying to target muscle building, compound exercises are probably still first, but isolation there is a big part that plays in there as well. All right. So thank you so much for tuning in. This has been another episode of Hack the Body, Hack the Mind. If you want to find out any more information about us, you can head to my website, www.hackthebodyhackthemind.com. It's a mouthful. Good luck with that. Again, ask any questions that you want to ask through my Instagram. I help a lot of people through DMs. So don't be afraid to kind of jump in there and just ask, ask away. All right. Thank you so much. And we will see you on the next one.